ever heard of the Packard V12 Marine engine? It's an engineering marvel that roared through World War II, powering the nimble and notorious PT boats. This overlooked legend shares ties with the famed Liberty L12, but followed a separate evolutionary path that helped rewrite maritime warfare and high-speed boating. In this video, we'll explore its roots, unravel myths, and discover how a World War I breakthrough sparked a legacy you definitely need to know today. There's a peculiar myth circulating that the Packard V-12 marine engines were somehow just rebadged Rolls-Royce Merlins, or straightforwardly based on the earlier Packard Liberty L-12. That couldn't be further from the truth. Sure, Packard did build the Merlin V-1650 under license for aircraft, but that was a completely separate venture. And while these marine V-12s share some distant DNA with the Liberty L-12, since Jesse G. Vincent of Packard co-developed the Liberty with Albert J. Hall during World War I, they aren't the same engine. Confusion arises partly because both engines are V-12s from the same company and share certain design philosophies. When folks see the words Packard and V-12, many assume it's all one big happy family. The reality is more of a second cousin once removed situation. The Packard marine engine that would end up roaring in the PT boats was a distinctly different beast, purpose-built for watery warfare and eventually for high-speed aquatic racing. Now, I'm not here to crush any illusions about romantic old war legends, but history is more fun when we respect the details, especially if those details mean telling your buddies at the marina that nope, your dad's friend's neighbor didn't have a Merlin in his cabin cruiser. Truth is, this Marine V-12 had a lineage all its own, an evolutionary path that started in a time of enormous global need, and it paved the way for some truly mind-blowing developments in the realm of fast boats. That's the story we'll unravel today. Back in May 1917, the United States declared war on Germany. The Army realized almost overnight that it needed a reliable, high-powered aircraft engine, pronto. This demand was so urgent that they took top engine designers, locked them in a room in Washington, D.C., and gave them the mother of all deadlines. Jesse V. Vincent from Packard and Albert J. Hall of Hall Scott famously teamed up in this creative pressure cooker. In five days, yes, five, they hammered out a design for a 45-degree V-12 engine. That engine, eventually called the Liberty L-12, was a marvel for its day. With a displacement of 1,640 cubic inches, overhead camshafts, and liquid cooling, it was pushing around 400 horsepower right out of the gate. Keep in mind that horsepower numbers in the early 1900s were a bit like slices of pizza in a college dorm. Nobody ever seemed to have enough. The War Department was thrilled, ordering huge quantities that ultimately led to nearly 20,000 units built by 1919. Although we generally think of these as airplane engines, and they were, it's important to note that the L-12's success put Packard on the engineering map. The public only saw the final product, but behind the scenes, the brilliance of Jesse Vincent and his team would soon evolve into something even bigger. When World War I ended, most folks were ready to kick back and take a breather. The folks at Packard were not. Instead, they went on tinkering with the Liberty concept, hoping to adapt its fundamentals into a more refined and, crucially, more powerful design. This was the birth of the 1A2500. It swapped the 45-degree cylinder bank angle for a 60-degree angle, thereby improving engine balance. The stroke was shaved down from 7 inches to 6.5, and, and the bore was bumped up to 6 and 3 eighths. That gave this new engine 2,500 cubic inches of displacement. Now, technical data might not flow to everyone's boat, but consider this. Separate steel cylinders with integrated valve covers replaced the old-school head gasket approach. That might sound minor, but it meant improved reliability in high-stress operations, plus simplified maintenance. Two very big deals when you're out at sea or on a racetrack. The first generation of the 1A2500 wasn't exactly a runaway success, producing around 600 horsepower at a time when people were increasingly chasing bigger numbers. Sales were lackluster, but instead of throwing in the towel, Packard said, let's keep at it. Over the next few iterations, they gradually upped the ante. Better lubrication, improved supercharging, and more streamlined ignition were among the changes. By 1930, the final 5A2500 variant could push emergency power all the way up to 1500 horsepower, a monstrous output for that era. 
It was like going from standard coffee to an extra espresso triple shot. Despite the success of the 5A2500, the US Army Air Corps wasn't exactly drooling over the possibility of using it in new aircraft. For them, the sky was literally the limit, and other engine configurations were capturing their attention. So Packard pivoted to the next best thing. The US Navy was keenly interested in high-speed marine propulsion. Think of an era when the Navy was experimenting with smaller, faster vessels, a concept that would eventually lead to patrol torpedo boats, or PT boats. Packard adapted the 1A2500 into a marine variant called the 1M2500. This new engine was crafted specifically for salt-sprayed action, sporting water-cooled exhaust manifolds and dual exit capabilities to keep temperatures under control. Naval engineers couldn't just have a toasty pipe blowing scalding water and exhaust at the deck crew, after all. The typical PT boat layout had three of these engines on board, with the outer two using V-drive transmissions and the center engine employing direct drive. If you're wondering if that could configuration caused headaches for the mechanics. Yes, absolutely, but that was the price to pay for speed and maneuverability. Running a high-powered V12 at sea is a bit like running a marathon on a tightrope. It's thrilling, but things can go very wrong if you lose focus. These Packard marine engines came as complete kits, including ignition, carburetors, starters, generators, reverse gears, and oil systems. That meant that if something acted up, you had a lot of interconnected parts to troubleshoot. Every 750 hours of operation, a major overhaul was required. While 750 hours might sound like a solid stretch to some, to others who expected indefinite operation, it felt criminally short. This bit of maintenance baggage is a point of minor controversy. Some critics argue that Packard over-engineered the engine to the point that it was too delicate for extended missions. While defenders point out that PT boats often operated under extreme conditions, rapid accelerations, high RPM, salt water infiltration, making 750 hours a reasonable figure. In any case, naval crews were often well-trained in the balancing act required to keep these engines humming. Overhauls became a sort of necessary evil. They'd tear down engines, replace worn parts, run tests, and patch everything up before the next patrol. If you ever chat with a surviving veteran who worked on PT boats, chances are you'll get an earful about how every day seemed like a new mechanical adventure. You might be asking, did these monsters ever get to do anything fun? Glad you asked. After World War II, many of these Marine V-12s made their way into the civilian domain. Because of their high power-to-weight ratio and proven reliability, assuming you stayed on top of that maintenance schedule, folks began installing them in large, high-performance racing boats. Powerboat enthusiasts recognized that an engine designed to propel a fully loaded PT boat at breakneck speeds could easily turn a private speedboat into a waterborne rocket. Imagine roaring past your buddy, leaving them in a fountain of spray and engine thunder. This is where the racing engine label truly sticks. Some historical powerboat events featured modified Packard Marine V12s running at wide open throttle. And yes, they were big, loud, and demanding. The fuel economy was somewhere between ouch and I need a mortgage for my gas bill. But hey, speed never came cheap, especially not in the 1950s and 1960s when raw horsepower and speed records often overshadowed practical fuel considerations. You could say these engines had a thirst for excitement and for premium gasoline. One recurring controversy revolves around the Packard Merlin overshadowing the 1M2500 in historical discussions. The Merlin was a star in aircraft, famously powering Mustangs, Spitfires, and Lancasters. Packard built their version of that Rolls-Royce design under license. It was a sensational engine, forging new legends in the skies of World War II. As a result, the overshadowing was almost inevitable. When you say Packard V12, the average enthusiast might picture a Mustang's power plant before they envision a PT boat cruising the South Pacific. Yet from a design standpoint, the Marine V12 was no slouch. It was literally built to endure the harsh, corrosive environment of salt water, the punishing demands of short burst battles, and the complexities of engine heat management in a cramped hull. It didn't need to climb to 30,000 feet. It needed to outrun enemy patrols and launch swift surprise attacks. The difference in these requirements is massive. You can't simply swap an aircraft engine into a boat and hope for success. 
Imagine trying to float a Spitfire engine with no modifications. You'd have an overheated, waterlogged hunk of junk in seconds. So while the Packard Merlin soared in the public imagination, the 1M2500 quietly racked up victories on the open sea. That's a legacy worthy of its own round of applause. Even though the war is long gone, the roar of the Packard V12 marine engine lingers. The last operational examples of these engines are famously found in the PT-658, a Higgins-built boat preserved in Portland, Oregon. If you ever get a chance to see it, or better yet, hear it, you'll understand the emotional chord it strikes. The engine isn't just a historical artifact. It's a living, growling piece of mechanical heritage that ties together innovation, warfare, American ingenuity, and a dash of rebellious speed. PT-658 offers a window into how these engines have withstood the test of time. Volunteers and restorers face the same challenges Navy mechanics did decades ago. Heart scarcity, complicated maintenance rituals, and the constant vigilance needed to run a liquid-cooled, supercharged V-12 in a wooden hull. The difference is they do it now for public demonstrations and historical preservation. It's not too often you see a crowd applauding an 80-year-old engine, but this is one of those special cases. The question remains, why does this engine hold such fascination among gearheads, history buffs, and casual boaters alike? Perhaps it's because it stands at the intersection of war heroics, mechanical innovation, and raw performance. It's a direct descendant of the Liberty L12, an engine developed under the insane pressure of World War I. It matured into the 1A2500 line, championing design evolutions that included supercharging, involved valve configurations, and integrated steel cylinders. Then, when the Army Air Corps wasn't all that interested, the Navy saw a golden opportunity and wrote it into the script for the iconic PT boats. It had its quirks, too, like the need for frequent overhauls, the occasional meltdown if you pushed it too hard, and the eye-watering fuel consumption. Despite that, it worked beautifully when handled right. If you can call an engine that allowed PT boats to dash in and out of combat beautiful, it was exactly that. It also found a second life in racing boats, proving that good engineering can transcend its original context. Even the controversies, like confusion with the Merlin or accusations of it being too complex, add to its mystique. Nothing says legend quite like a healthy debate around the bar at closing time. That's the charm of the Packard V12 marine engine. It's not just another chunk of metal from the war machine era, it's a story of American determination, of backroom engineering brilliance, and of an engine that could fling a boat across the water faster than you can say. Rolls-Royce who? It's full of contradictions, extremes, and real-world results. And let's face it, we all love something that revs up controversy along with its crankshaft. I hope you learned something new about how an old warhorse can transform into a high-speed racing champion. If this made your gears turn or sparked a few new debates among your friends, consider subscribing. There's plenty more fascinating stuff on vintage engines and hidden historical gems just waiting to be uncovered. Thanks for sticking around to the very end of this deep dive into the legendary Packard V12 marine engine. And hey, if you have any Packard stories, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them.